Thank you for tuning in. Good morning, Bells. Something just resonated with me this morning. So I wanted to get the message out there. And the message is don't normalize suffering. Don't normalize suffering in relationships and don't normalize suffering in your work life. Now, I have dealt with both personally in the past and it took a toll on my mental health and it kind of took a toll on my physical health. I say this because stress causes physical ailments like headaches, for example, stomach aches when your stomach is in knots. You know, stress takes a toll on the body, whether we want to believe it or not. We hear this a lot, but I really want it to sink in. I want you to know that it really does affect your health. So we've got to get that stress under control. And a lot of times we normalize suffering. We do. And when I say this, I mean we put up with a lot. We put up with a lot that we don't have to put up with. You know, life is going to come with its challenges, but don't create more challenges by normalizing the suffering that you endure in relationships where you can just let go of that relationship or in your work life where you can just be done with that job. And I know what you're saying. Some relationships you just can't kick. Because that person has been in your life for a long time. You have history or this person is related to you. They're in your life, whatever the case. Or, of course, this is your job. This is your bread and butter. This is where you get your money from. But what I'm saying is take the necessary steps to get there. Recognize it. The first key is recognizing it. Recognize where your suffering is coming from, which relationships are causing you to suffer, what aspects of your job are causing you to suffer, and take the necessary steps to find a new job, or if you need to do a career change, make the career change. I myself had to go through a career change in order to get my peace and my sanity back. I've also had to let relationships go in order to get my peace and my sanity back because it just wasn't worth it. So I'm going to touch on a few points today. The first point is proximity. And proximity does not equate to friends and family. What I mean by that is just because someone is in close proximity to you, that does not mean that is your friend or it does not mean that that is your family and we really have to recognize this we're around co-workers or colleagues we're around associates and we're around relatives see that language i use there i didn't say friends and i did not say family We have to learn different verbiage because if we keep saying friend and family, then we're going to keep overextending ourselves for these people when they were never meant to play that role in our lives. So coworkers, colleagues, those are the people that you work with. Those are the people on the job. And I know you've heard, you know, your coworkers are not your friends. It's very true. And sometimes if we're friendly or giggly with a coworker, we might mistake it as a friend. But a friend, a, a friend has your best interests at heart. A friend is someone you can confide in. That colleague may not be someone who has your best interests at heart, and they very well may not be someone that you can confide in. And I'm not saying that colleagues can't turn into friends. I've had colleagues in the past who are still great friends of mine, but everybody is not that. Also, associates, you know, sometimes people are in your life and you can key key with them, but you can't trust them. You can't put your trust in them. You can't depend on them. And you keep it 
you want to keep things surface because you can't trust them with the details of your life and they don't get that deep access to you. So learn to label them as associates. And the last big one is fam relatives. Relatives. I'm going to say that word because sometimes we'll call it family. And I too believe that family is everything. But when I say family is everything, I'm not talking about all of the people who are related to me. I'm talking about the people who are close to me. That's family to me. Some of them happen to share the same blood as me. Some of them don't. Some family members I have chosen, I've chosen them to be my family. Some people were born into my family. And the ones who happen to share the same blood as me, but we don't we don't have a relationship or you know, I feel that I can't trust them. Those are relatives. Those are relatives. And I want people to start to recognize the difference. You know, some people who share the same blood as you don't have your best interests at heart. Those people are your relatives, okay? You can't control that you were born into a specific family. You can't control the fact that when you opened up your eyes and you came up out the womb, these were the people who were waiting on you. Cousins, aunts, uncles, siblings, whomever. Now, it's beautiful when you form some type of relationship and trust with these people. Yes, that is your family. But if these people, if you happen to open your eyes and these people have been out to get you from the start or these people never develop a bond with you, then you simply have to learn to call a spade a spade and call a relative a relative. You just happen to be related to that person. And what's important to understand is that sometimes we get around these people and we're projecting our feelings onto them. We think because we're around them all the time and, you know, we, we're sharing bits and parts of our life with them and we slowly begin to trust and confide in them. But that's not to say that they feel the same way about us. So that proximity... You got to watch that. That'll get you in trouble sometimes because you're around someone and because you all happen to be around each other a lot or often, then you start to delegate false, false roles to these people and think they're your friend. They're not always necessarily your friend or you can't always necessarily consider them family and I say this because I'm sure there are people who you don't talk to on a regular basis but you're not in close proximity with who would be there for you in a heartbeat they will be there for you in a heartbeat I have people myself who I don't talk to every day or I don't talk to on a regular basis but if they call me I'm there and vice versa. I can count on them. Those are friends. Those are family. And we just have to be careful on how we label people. Because sometimes we can get stressed out because we're giving folks the wrong labels. We're saying, this is my friend. This is my family. And they're not. They're not. They're just not. You have to vet people and place them in the appropriate category or in the appropriate lane or you're just going to get your feelings hurt. It all boils down to your tolerance being too high for BS. And at the end of the day, you deserve what you settle for. You deserve what you settle for. If you're settling for that type of treatment, then that's exactly what you get. So stop settling for it and do whatever it is you need to do to reduce 
your stress. If it's a job, on the other hand, take the appropriate steps to leave the job, start applying, make time to apply for other jobs, make time to spruce up your resume, your cover letter, try to network, but take the necessary steps to get yourself out of that job. Don't just stay there and feel like that's it, like you have to, like you have to stay there. You don't. You can move on. You can find something else. The biggest mistake people make is feeling like they're stuck. And society wants us to feel stuck because of our age. They they drill that into us. They want us to feel stuck because of our age, but it's it's just not true. It's not true. You can start over at any point in your life. As long as you're living and breathing, you can start over. We just got to stop settling. And I think the boomers, in my opinion, the boomers and the silent generation, some of them kind of normalized suffering and they passed it down through the generations. You know, sometimes you'll hear them talk about how they hated their job or they couldn't stand their job, you know, for all the years that they've worked their job. And then they finally retire. And when some of them retire, they retire sick or disabled. And it was because of that stress. Also, some of them stay in relationships or marriages because they didn't believe in divorce. Divorce was frowned upon. So they stayed in those relationships. And one thing I like about my generation, I'm a millennial, is that I feel like we're the move on generation. We don't like something, we move on. It's not quitting. We've been taught that quitting was bad. Don't quit. Don't give up. But I like the fact that we have mastered the art of moving on, recognizing I don't like this or this is not for me and moving on, whether it be a marriage, a relationship, or whether it be a job. We'll move on in a heartbeat. And I've had some older generations try to shame me for that when I was younger. They can't shame me for it now because I'm I'm wiser now and I don't let that stuff shake me. But I, I like I like that. And that's one of the qualities that I'm glad I picked up is the art of moving on for some, from something that does not serve me. And I speak about this in my newest ebook. So check it out on the website. If you need some further help with this, you can book a one-on-one consult with me also on the website. So thanks for tuning in once again, and I'll see you later.